I asked you, I posed to you, why? The mathematicians have no problem inventing new notation, right? They're like, oh, you know, what's the sum of something? Let's just use Greek letters. Oh, I need to have another symbol for the sum, and we'll use the Greek letter. I know, let's just write a letter S and make it really long, okay? S for sum. Doesn't stand for hope. Anyway, um, that was a Superman joke, no one got it. Mathematicians have no trouble making up new notation, and yet they've recycled this notation. What does it mean usually? What do you take it to mean? When you see those two vertical lines, you usually take that to mean absolute value, right? So you'd say, oh, the absolute value of negative three is three. three. And to you, all it means is, just give me the positive number. That's all it means, okay? What did I define it as here? I defined it as distance. I defined it as distance. Do you see? Let's go back to the number line over here. If I said to you the absolute value of negative 3, it doesn't just mean lop off the negative sign. It means what's the distance? How far is negative 3 from the origin? And the answer is it's 3 units. Okay. So now you can say, well, what's the distance from the origin of anything and they go off in all these kinds of weird directions. Okay. So make a little subheading, conversion, and let's do a really quick one. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is now that we know we can represent these numbers graphically, I want us to draw, uh, it doesn't have to be beautiful, I want us to draw where this number is. Okay, so you need your argand diagram, like so. You can see I haven't drawn the whole thing uh, because I know which quadrant I'm going to be in. I've got a positive number here, positive number here. So I'm going to go off one unit on the real axis. Should have labeled that, a bit lazy. How far do I go up the imaginary axis? Root 3. Root 3. Now, you might know, not know what root 3 off the top of your head is. It's about 1.7. Okay. Now again, did you notice, right? I just did that. You've got two different forms. I could say root 3 in third form, or I could say it in decimal form. But decimal is a lot more useful to me. Because if there's 1 and 2, I know where 1.7 is. Whereas like root 3, pff, where is that? So I'm going to put root 3 where it should belong. There's root 3. And this is the imaginary axis. Okay. So if this is 1 and this is root 3, where's 1 plus root 3 i? It's going to be over here, right? Maybe you want to put in some lines to show the rectangle that sort of makes it rectangular form, like so. Now, what do I need out of this? If I want to convert this is already in rectangular form, how am I going to put it into polar form? Right? I need two pieces. I need this guy, what's it called again? Modulus. The modulus. And then I need the other piece, which is the argument. So that's the angle measured up from the real axis. There it is there. How am I going to do this? Any suggestions? Okay, so I can either go for the argument first or for the modulus. If I've got both pieces, it doesn't matter which one I go for. If you want to go for the argument, then I can say, hey, look, I have got this side here, which is adjacent to theta, right? That's one. And then I've got this side here, which is opposite theta, which is root three. So opposite adjacent, that means 10. Right? So I would say 10 theta equals opposite on adjacent. You happy with that? Yeah. Does anyone know what that angle is off the top of their head? You should be able to see it, in fact, if you've drawn it even reasonably. It's 60 degrees, but we know better than 60 degrees. 60 degrees is a third of a straight angle, right? It's a third of a straight angle. So I'm going to say that theta is pi, that's a straight angle on 3. You happy with that? So I know my argument. How am I going to work out my modulus? Just to Pythagoras, right? You've got your two shorter sides, so you can say that the modulus here by Pythagoras is going to be the square root of, have a look, it's 1 plus root 3 squared, so that's 1 plus 3, so that's the square root of 4, which of course is, so how am I going to write this in mod arg form, in polar form? I'm going to say, instead of this, I'm going to say z is equal to r outside of cos theta plus i 
sine theta and above. Okay. Now, before I finish, I want you to notice you need a distance, you need an angle, right? The distance is unambiguous. You're like, that's only two, okay? But there's more than one angle that you can turn around, that you can rotate through, that will get you to that point, right? Pi on three is one of them. Can someone give me another angle that I could rotate through and still be facing at Z? I could do this pi on three, and then I could just do another two pi. Do you agree with that? It would still have me facing in the same direction because two pi is just a revolution, right? So 2 pi plus pi on 3, I believe that would be 7 pi on 3. 7 pi on 3. Now interestingly, these are the same number. It takes me to the same spot, right? I face at the same position and I go the same distance. But as you can imagine, well, which form do you think we prefer? We prefer the top one, right? Because like, well, it's a bit redundant. Like, good for you if you like spinning around, but I prefer to just go straight there. Okay. So what we do is, do you remember when I told you about square roots? And we said every non-zero number has how many square roots? Two. But one of them is more important, and we call it the principal square root. Okay. Let's finish. There's an infinite number of angles, an infinite number of arguments that will take you to this number, but one of them is the most important one, the smallest one, and we call that. What have we got here? We call that the principal argument. Make sense? 